Hello everybody and welcome to Kerbal Space Program Career Mode with me, Reinstein. So, I got a cool contract that I've been asked to do and they want me to build a surface outpost on Minmus. Uh, the objectives are, just take a look at the top right hand corner here, land your outpost on Minmus, build a new outpost that has an antenna, docking port, generate power, needs to support five Kerbals and have a viewing cupola on the outpost too. Now, I've been working on a number of things. I thought I'd better spend some of my Kerbal credits testing this bad boy out. So, what I did was, I, I built my rover here. i just got to try and explain it to you, really. I, I built a rover. I thought this would be the best way to maneuver it. Um, and then, on top of it, I've built, built one of these hitchhiker storage containers. Now, the good thing about this is, if I have two of these, then that allows me to have eight Kerbins, Kerbals, up in um, on Minmus. Plus, on the second one that I launch, or the first one, doesn't matter, I could put a cupola up on top. So that means in total I'll have support for nine Kerbals, go partway to supporting uh, any further contracts they offer me. Either way, I've been playing around with this for a long time, trying to think, how's the best way to do this? So as part of that, I built one of these. And this is my little grabbing tool. So you can see here, basically how it works is you've probably seen it before on other people's videos but let me just uh, show the people who don't know you just control this you've got a little grabbing arm and if you get close enough to something this is how you grab an asteroid basically with this little grabbing claw here there you go and you get attached to it so if I needed to I could you know land this back down on uh, Minmus and drag things around and form like a kind of train but the idea that I'm gonna do is use two of these oh let's just get rid of that is use two of these um this one let me just move over to this one and then connect them together with a cupola on top and then i'll have met the objective so without further ado let me show you the rocket that's going to carry it there and connecting them together on mimbus okay so here is the rocket that is going to take us to mimbus and land now i've made a few slight alterations to our landing module uh, it's still got the rover, it's got a little battery under there that's rechargeable. I'm using these liquid fuel engines on the side with a nice big fuel tank there. Uh, purely for the thrust to weight ratio, um, you can see here I've got a delta V of 7205 which should easily be enough to get me to Mimbus. Um, every stage is well over 2, 2 is kind of like a, a really nice number if you can get a thrust to weight ratio of 2. So I may have overcooked things just a little bit, but I'm quite happy with this rocket design. I've added a few bits of space tape to keep it um, nice and steady. I've even got the aerodynamics that you guys um, suggest I use, and little winglets to aid in stability while in Kerbin atmosphere. Now here's my docking ports, I've got some retractable solar panels. And I've got my little communitron there. So the door, when the Kerbals want to get out, is right there. Without further ado, let's go and launch this beast. So here we are with the launch. Let's turn our thruster up to halfway. Um, I, find, I think halfway is probably kind of good. I don't want to be accelerating too fast with this bad boy. Uh, I need to maintain some element of control. And I don't want to use too much uh, fuel either, especially not closer to the earth because closer to the not earth closer to, the closer to Kerbin that I am obviously the more fuel I'm going to be using so the higher up in the atmosphere I get the less fuel I'll be using so doing a slow gradual burn is going to serve me well here now one thing I want to point out is how much does my rocket or at least the landing phase look like a freaking minion it looks like a minion doesn't it it's got little arms there it's got that little eye at the front it looks like the little cycloptic million minion that's there uh, on the despicable me, so <laughs> I think that's kind of cool. Um, now I think with this rocket, I'm gonna start doing my gravity burn um, kind of late-ish, maybe 15, 17, 20,000 meters is probably a good bet because it is kind of top-heavy. So the less gravity acting on it, uh, the better I think. Um, I just wanted to show you guys that I am taking notice of your your suggestions that I do a proper gravity burn, and I'm I'm doing my best. You know what I mean? Alright, so we're at 12,000 meters now. Any second, I'm going to start tilting to the right. Let's see, we'll just do it ever so slightly now. There we go, we don't want to go too fast. So at 20,000, hopefully we'll be halfway. And then by 30,000, I want to be on the nav ball. I want to be where that 90 is, if you just see that down there. I'm 
moment to control this. I'm just going to increase my thrust a little bit, keep it going upwards, and it's wiggling off course just a tad. Let's put my brakes on. Um, there we go. Not too bad. Not too bad so far, right? Eh? So you can check uh, in the top left. My apoapsis is now climbing up to 60,000 meters. Ooh, we finished that stage of our burn. Nice. All right, here we go. So 60, once it gets to about 80,000, I guess I'll start tilting. Uh, or maybe I can even stop my burn uh, and do another maneuver once I get to the apoapsis of this stage. But let's see, I'll start tilting it even more right now. And I think that is about my gravity burn complete. What do you think? Not too bad, eh? I mean, come on. I'm not that much of a noob. Now, what I'm concerned about is if I, if I do another maneuver, then I'm going to lose loads of momentum. So I think what I'm going to keep doing is just keep burning like this. I basically have wasted delta V. I'm probably wasting delta V anyway. But, you know, I'm getting there slowly but surely. Let's just rotate my rocket a little bit. There we go. So as long as I can get into a fast enough speed around Kerbin, I'll be happy. I'm just speeding up the game engine a little bit here. Ooh, we got the orbit music. Yay. All right, now I think I'm going to set my maneuver for the apoapsis. Let's just add that. Here we go. And 69. <laughs> 69. Some of you will be like, <laughs> All right, let's fast forward. There we go. Now we need a delta V of about 600 left. That will leave us just over 3,000 meters per second to get to Minmus. I'm hoping that's enough. Fingers crossed. Come on, Riney. We can get this bad boy into orbit. Look at it fly. I'm, I'm going to enjoy this. It's going to be like a caterpillar or a train on the surface of Minmus. Right. Now let's begin our trajectory. Or find a trajectory to get us to Minmus. Now let's see. Ooh, our descending node is way out of whack, minus 5.8. So let's add a maneuver there. Minus 2.6, minus 2, minus 1. There we go. I'm gonna just gonna do that. That's gonna require another 224 delta V, but it will enable us to be in the sort of. I think the word is planar orbit. So you're sort of orbiting at the right angle around Minmus. I think that's the right way of saying it. I may have got it wrong. Correct me if uh, if you feel the need. Alright, there we go. Just about at the point where I want to do my burn. Lovely jubbly. And, oh, we finished that stage. Let's take a look at what's going on here. So now we're on this stage. Sweet! Alright, I'm kind of happy with that maneuver I've done there. So... It puts us descending no minus 0.9. That's actually fine. So it looks like maybe we'll get an encounter if we do a maneuver here. But for now, I am going to disappear, do this maneuver, and you will rejoin me when I'm on my approach to Minmus. All right, see you in a second. So on my descent to Minmus, it was important that I chose a good landing spot. As usual, I've sped this up because it take, took quite a while to land it in a good manner in order so it didn't tip over and all that kind of stuff. Just to give it enough control, you know. So anyway, I wanted to choose a good landing spot. And these, I guess they're like ice lakes on Minmus. They represent a perfect opportunity to build a base. They're perfectly flat, obviously allowing for the curvature of the planet, but they're flat. And um, it's relatively easy to, you know, build a stable structure on there. However, they are quite slippery, as I imagine much of Minmus is. Therefore, um, when I go to kind of drive this module and the next module across the surface, I am going to have to be really careful in order not to tip it over. So you can see me just maneuvering here. All I had to do was... Uh, burn retrograde at a slow enough speed to land it comfortably you know and uh, this did take ages that's why I sped it up um, I say ages probably five or ten minutes but I'm an impatient man it took way too long for me so uh, I sped it up for your convenience because you might be impatient too so here we go we're just plummeting down to the ground and you can see how flat this is absolutely perfect terrain to build a base on now in an ideal world, I probably wouldn't build my little outpost on Minmus or any other planet 
with wheels on the bottom. But it does provide one advantage, and that is that, you know, you can drive it around like a train, you can move it, you can, you know, do whatever you want, really. So it's good in that sense, but it's not as stable as it otherwise might be. But I found it, I think I will find it easier in order to connect all the pieces together. As long as I get the docking ports at the same height on the next module, then it'll be absolutely fine. And since it's a saved ship, that's what I'm gonna do. So here we go, we land. And I thought, okay, well, let's just see how it handles. If it tips over, we're screwed. So I started driving a little bit, and you can see even that, that slow speed, it's still tipping a little bit, so I had to be careful. Then I thought, open up the solar panels, keep the electricity going. And that's my first part of my outpost on Minmus. The second part I will show you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.